Hello guys, so if we drop into the game here now, we aim down the site. We have the aim functionality down pretty good for a prototype, but we can't actually shoot and nothing happens when we click. So the goal of this video will be to prototype a uh, shooting system that will animate the pistol, the player, um, it will be able to detect what we shoot, and we'll add some effects to it as well. So let's first go to the player controls, and we're going to add in an input that will let us know when we're shooting the gun. So in player actions, I'm just going to add a new button or input called shoot, and I'm going to make mine the left mouse button. So when we click, that's when the input will be triggered. Now that we got that done, let's go to the input manager and uh, let's actually add that input in as we've done before with the rest. So starting out, I'm going to make a function, a private void. I'm just going to call this handle shooting input. And in the future, this will be changed. We use knives and stuff too, but for now, we'll just call it handle shooting input. So we can also add a function here later to decide if the weapon is semi-automatic or automatic. And depending on that, we will change how we handle the input itself. Just going to leave a note here in the future so I can think about that when I make adjustments as we add on more layers of code. So for the button inputs, I'm just going to add a bool here. Uh, I'm going to call that, I'm going to have it a public. I'm going to call it shoot input. Okay. And I'm actually going to put that below aiming input. The reason why I'm putting these public, by the way, is so I can just check them in the inspector for debugging purposes. Um, so I'm going to say player controls dot player actions dot shoot dot performed plus equals I equals less than shoot input equals true. And much like our aiming input, we're also going to make it so if we cancel the click action, this will turn to false because in the future, when we add automatic fire functionality, holding down the button will give us continued fire. Okay, gonna save that there now. That looks good. But first, we're gonna worry about semi-automatic. We're, we're just gonna handle the pistol first. So let's go down here to this function. We're gonna say if shoot input, uh, and we are aiming. You can't shoot without aiming in Resident Evil. We're going to say shoot input equals false. And then we're going to put some pseudocode here. Shoot current weapon. Okay, so let's actually call this. And we're going to put a debug.log here for bang just to make sure the input is going off correctly. Um, and then we're going to call this function on handle all inputs so we can actually see if it works in game. So let's say handle shooting input and then we save. Now let's jump into the game and press play. If we click while aiming right now, I'm gonna click first. I'm clicking, nothing is happening. Now if I aim and click, yes, bang in the inspector. So we know the input works as intended. We know that if we aim, we'll, we now have the ability to shoot. So next let's actually work on animating the pistol and adding some effects. Now if you have weapons in the asset store, like I got mine from, you're probably gonna have them uh, somewhat like this. This is divided into several pieces. So we can actually go to the um, the masterpiece here, the the top parent object, and we can add an animator component. And much like our character, we can make a controller for it. So I'm just going to create an animator controller. I'm going to call this weapon underscore Glock. Um, and then I'm just going to rename the pistol to Glock as well so we can avoid naming conventions and confusion. And I'm going to name the uh, weapon animator overrider from pistol to Glock. So basically, uh, this is just a simple object that we can animate in the game. I'll show you how. Uh, let's just drag the animator controller in here. Go up to the window tab right here and click on animation and then animation. Now create a new clip. I'm just going to call this weapon underscore Glock underscore shoot because this will be shooting it and racking the slide back. Hit the record button here and you can see that if I'm just going to copy the component or this transform. So when I move it, um, I can get it back to normal later. It's gonna hit copy component. Now, if I move this even a little bit, you can see it'll make a little keyframe here. So I'm just gonna go a couple frames ahead because it, it's gonna go by really fast. I'm thinking two or three frames. Move the slide back a fair way. And then I'm going to go two frames ahead again and just paste the component transform values. And there we go, that's it. You have an animated object. Now, if we go into the animator window, that's gonna be our default animation. We don't want that. We want the default animation to be empty, so nothing's happening. So let's just rename this to empty. And then let's empty this animation and let's create a new animation uh, slot here. Let's just call this shoot and let's drag in the animation we just made. So weapon Glock shoot. Then we're gonna make a transition back to the empty state. Uh, make sure it looks okay. Um, okay, so looping is on for me. I don't want that. I'm gonna uncheck loop time. We don't want that. And uh, next, I'm going to make sure that it's actually not blended out of existence. So I'm going to change the exit time to uh, one so that I'll make sure I get the full animation. And there you go. That looks pretty good. Just a quick, nice snap. So 
Now that's done, let's add a new script. We're gonna call it Weapon Animator Manager. I'm adding this to the top parent object of the Glock prefab that we instantiate into our character's hand. Um, this is just gonna control the animation of the weapon when we actually choose to fire it. So I'm gonna start off by declaring an animator variable, call it Weapon Animator. And on awake, I'm just going to say Weapon Animator equals get component in children animator. And that's because the animator object sits below the weapon animator manager script, at least on my prefab. If yours is different, then you call it however it is. So next, I'm going to make a public void. I'm going to call this shoot weapon. And let's make some pseudocode here to decide what we want in this. So first, obviously, we want to animate uh, the Glock. We want to make the slide rack back. We just create an animation. We want to use it. And we want to instantiate uh, some smoke effects, some muzzle flash, and we want to instantiate an empty bullet case that will just eject from the side of the gun. Um, next, we also want to shoot something. So we want to know what we hit. So it's pretty straightforward. Let's start banging out all these little things. Um, I'm going to start by making a header. I'm going to call this weapon effects, and I'm going to make two game objects here, public. Uh, the first one will be called Weapon Muzzle Flash Effects. And this will be the flash that uh, spawns at the top of the gun when you shoot. The second one will be Weapon Bullet Case Effects. And this will be a shell ejected from the side of the weapon when you shoot. Okay, and next I'm going to make another header called Weapon Effects Transforms. And this will be the transform that chooses where these effects are instantiated. So, for example, if I place the transform for the muzzle flash at the tip of the barrel, that's where the muzzle flash is going to appear. If I place the transform for the bullet casing at the side of the slide, that's where the casing is going to appear when it spawns in. Um, pretty straightforward, pretty simple. We're going to make these public because we're going to drag them in the inspector. Uh, likewise with the effects. And I'm just going to make some comments here on this code so that in the future we know exactly what this is. I'm going to make a habit now of commenting my code during this tutorial series. I find this is especially helpful for people who are not so familiar with Unity and people who are not so in-depth or intermediate with the code. So I'm just going to say the muzzle flash effect that is instantiated when the weapon is fired. And this will be the bullet case effect that is instantiated when the weapon is fired. So next, after we're done this, what we're going to do is basically just create empty game objects on the weapon and position them wherever you want to position them uh, for these effects to instantiate. So I'm going to position the muzzle flash um, transform at the tip of the barrel. I suggest you do the same. And I'm going to position the uh, bullet ejection transform at the side of the slide. All right, that looks good. So now animating the Glock, let's just say weapon animator dot play. And then I believe I called it fire. Maybe it was shoot. I have to change that. But that's it. Uh, that's just how we animate it. Very simple, very straightforward. We're just calling upon the animator to play an animation. Um, I'm going to leave this code up here just in case for somebody who might want it there in the future. So I'm just going to say animate the weapon. Next, instantiate smoke effects. This one's very simple too. I'm going to rename that though to muzzle flash effects to keep the naming conventions the same. So what are we doing? Well, we're going to make a game object variable, call it muzzle flash. And we're going to equal that to an instantiate our weapon muzzle flash effect at our weapon muzzle flash transform. And that's it. And then we're going to do the same thing for the uh, empty bullet case. We're going to say game object. I'm going to call this uh, bullet case. And we're going to say that equals to instantiate weapon bullet case effect at the weapon bullet case transform. Okay. Now for shoot something, we're going to actually need the camera for this one. Um, the player's camera, if you want to know where the middle of the screen is. So let's pass our player camera variable here, call a player camera. When we call upon this function, we'll have to pass that. So we're going to say if physics, and yes, we're going to use a raycast for this, dot raycast. And then we're going to say player camera dot camera object dot trans, well, not transparency axes, dot transform, dot position. And then we're going to put a comma and we're going to say player camera dot camera object dot transform dot forward. And all this does is basically it makes a raycast shoot to the center point that our camera is facing. Now let's add a raycast hit variable real quick. So I'm just right here. I'm just going to make a raycast hit, call it hit. There we go, and put that here. And now we can actually track what we hit with this variable. So I'm just going to put nothing in here. I'm just going to put a debug in here for now and just say uh, debug.log hit dot transform dot game object uh, dot name. So we know exactly what we hit. 
And you'll be surprised at how precise this ends up being. I'll show you in a bit. In the future, we can uh, add some artificial difficulty to it to make it not as precise with recoil and such. But for now, we'll keep it like this because this is just a prototype. So um, now on the slide here, I'm going to create an empty game object. I'm just going to call this, uh, to keep the naming conventions very similar, I will call it weapon underscore muzzle underscore flash underscore transform. And I'm going to just get real close here to the barrel, put that right at the tip like so. And now I'm going to duplicate that and I'm going to rename it to, let's call it weapon underscore shell underscore ejection transform. Yeah, that's fine. And I'm going to pull that right back to the slide, which is this little silver piece here. I don't think on this pistol or this uh, model, rather the slide actually has its own transform. So I can't animate that. On some weapons you'll get, you'll actually be able to open this up too, to make it even more realistic. But this one, it does not move. Um, I got this as a Cinti model, by the way. So next we're gonna drag in our transforms here in the proper variable selections, like so. And next we need to actually get the effects. So I have a couple I wanna show you here. These are also Cinti effects I've edited. This one is a uh, shell ejection. This was from a, a one that was a little bit different, but I just kind of tweaked it to make it suit my needs. It fired multiple shells before. And this one was just a pop of smoke, also in a Cinti pack. I edited it to tweak my needs. I can't give you guys these uh, assets, unfortunately, because I, I have tweaked assets that I paid for. Uh, but there's a bunch of tutorials on YouTube to make these anyway. They're very simple. Okay, so I'm going to drag in my um, muzzle flash. I'm going to actually rename that to muzzle flash first. And then I'm going to drag in my um, bullet shell casing injection. Excellent. Okay. Now, that looks good. But we have no way to actually shoot the gun yet. So let's go to our player manager script. So, or the player equipment manager first, sorry. Uh, what we're going to do is actually make a weapon animator manager variable. Call that weapon animator manager or weapon animator. And then on the load current weapon, where we load our hand IK, let's also load up the weapons animator controller. Uh, this will let us shoot the weapon too using this variable. So we'll say weapon animator is equal to weapon slot or weapon loader slot dot current weapon model dot get component in children weapon animator manager. And that should work fine. So I'm gonna make this public so I can reference it from the player manager. And then on the player manager, I'm going to make a variable of type player equipment manager and call that on awake. It will be player equipment manager equals get component player equipment manager because it sits on the same game object as my player manager. And from there, we can actually shoot the weapon uh, in theory. So we're gonna try that next. I'm gonna make a function here now. Um, I'm gonna call it, I'm not gonna call it shoot weapon because in the future we'll have knives or grenades and stuff as well. So I'm just gonna call it public void use current weapon. Uh, and in the future, we will make it so you can, you know, different things will happen depending on if you're wielding a knife, a gun, uh, a grenade, a piece of equipment, whatever. So for now, we're gonna say player equipment manager dot weapon animator dot shoot weapon. And uh, we're gonna pass the player camera and that's it. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna put some code here or some comments rather saying in the future we will add the option to use knives also. All right, that looks good. I'm gonna save that now. And we actually have to call that function use current weapon on the input manager after we're handling the shoot input. So right here where it says shoot current weapon, we can say player manager dot use current weapon. The shoot input will also double as the knifing input or throw grenade input if you are using that equipment. I'm gonna change fire to shoot because I forgot the animation was actually called shoot, not fire. And I'm actually going to unparent the muzzle flash game object from our character. Uh, muzzle flash that transform not parent equals null. And I'm gonna do the same with the bullet case. This is just so I can see it in the scene when I've actually shot the gun. And uh, I wanna make sure it's, it's being deleted because we're gonna also delete that now with the script. So it's not in the scene for more than or longer than it should be. So on your uh, effects prefabs, I'm just going to create a very simple utility script. I'm gonna call it destroy after time. This is gonna be one line of code, very useful to get things out of your scene that aren't meant to linger there for a prolonged period of time. So let's delete the start and update function. We only want an awake, and we're just going to say destroy uh, game object comma time. And we're gonna make a public float for the time. I'm going to initialize that defaultly at five seconds. And all this does is after five seconds, it will delete this game object out of the scene uh, very simple, very straightforward, just great for things like effects that you don't want lingering on in the scene for a long period of time. And we're good to go. I'm going to add that to my muzzle flash as well. Five seconds, looking good. 
Okay, last, all we want to do is go to our character here now too. Let's go to the override layer. And I have an animation I'm using uh, called Pistol Shoot. And this will just make the player move and shoot uh, when he shoots the gun. Let's drag a transition back to the empty. And as you can see, this is all the animation is. This will give our player some oomph when he shoots as well. So we have to call this, and we have our um, our animator manager. That That's how we play animations. So I'm just going to call upon my animator manager up here on the player manager. Just going to call that animator manager. I will declare that in awake, and it is sitting on the same game object. So I will say animator manager equals get component animator manager. And again, this is just the script we use to basically call upon playing animations or action animations. Like we use it for our quick turns. Now we're going to use it for shooting the pistol as well. And we'll make a function in the future to decide. Uh, it'll be like a smart function to decide based on the equipment we're using, which animation to play. But for now, since we only have a pistol, we're going to say animator manager play animation without root motion. Uh, our target animation is called, I believe it's called pistol underscore shoot. And is performing action is true. We do not want to do anything else while we're shooting. Oh, and just to make sure we can't, you know, full on just click, 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 click. We're going to actually add a check. So we're going to say if we are performing action return, this will stop you from rapidly firing your weapon. It will wait till the recoil resets at least a little bit. We can make a recoil timer in the future and really tweak it and make it a lot more modular. So I'm going to get rid of the bang text. Don't need that in the debug anymore. And I'm going to save and we should be good to go. So if we go into the game here now and I aim at this yellow box, boom, we shoot the yellow. Yes. Okay. If I aim at the plane, we shoot the plane. It's actually very precise. It's right in the center. As you can see, I'm shooting the cube here and I will show you. So there's the yellow. I'm just going to clear the console just to show you. Watch this. If I zoom in here right on the edge of the yellow, boom, yellow. And then right on the edge of the gray cube over here, boom, cube. So that's very precise right in the center of the screen just as you want it. As you can see, the character is animated nicely, looking really good for a prototype, guys. Now, in the next episode, we're going to actually start doing some zombie AI so we can have something to shoot and do some damage. Going to get into the fun stuff real soon now. So I will see you guys in the next one. If you did like it, please drop a like, leave a comment. It genuinely helps out my series so much. I get to make more of these videos. It blesses me with the algorithm and appeases the YouTube algorithm gods. If you're feeling super generous, check out my Patreon below. I will see you in the next episode.